And that's why the ending to Malkovich's gaming game show is the best way to conclude a film in all of cinema. <sighs> True brilliance. Hello? Hi, Jargon. I'm afraid we have an emergency on our hands. What? What is it? Just Jargon. Your fleet is under attack. Oh, shit. I'm afraid it's bad, sir. Your gentleman's battleship board has been hit on air one, air two, air three, and even air four, sinking your submarine. Damn. So, another gentleman's battleship player is challenging the champion, eh? I'm afraid so, sir. B but it gets worse. Well, I already lost my aircraft carrier when William Axio got some beginner's luck, so I can't afford to lose anything else now while we're still out at sea. And not to sound at all cliche, but how could this possibly get any worse? The Challenger has made radio contact with us, sir. And, well, you're gonna want to hear this one for yourself. Patch me in. Hello? Speak up now, come on. My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. De de deploy us now. We need to make an emergency launch. Where? I, I don't care. Just get us out of here right now before he fires again. Aye, aye, Commander. Please tell me that's not who I think it was. Uh, I wish I could, sir. But he's returned to reclaim the title. What the fuck is review, brah? I am the champion of Gentleman's Battleship, you hear me? The only person who ever beat me is the Supreme Gentleman and he died years ago. As of last year, I'm the champion. But sir, Review Bra didn't compete in last year's championship. Hello? We need to find his weak spot, if only Jargon was here. That was a long time ago, sir. Are you sure you're still up to doing it? That way? Yeah, I think it's time to get back to basics. The original basics. It's channel review time. Epic style. I'll do some digging into his videos and see if anything pops out and gives away his position. But the only way to beat a gentleman in a gentleman's game is to outclass him. I think it's time to suit up. Yes, Admiral? Phases are readied and awaiting a target. Review Brad will make his move, and once he's dropped his missile in open water, we'll be able to return fire. Just as long as you have a target. Good, good. Wait my command. But first, since my computer's back on Earth, I'm gonna try a simpler approach for this one. I think it's time to give my newest invention a test run. What is it? Live action character stills. Review Bro has passed on my radar before, and not just in the literal sense during our little game of Gentleman's Battleship, but rather, he's the most requested channel by fans, period, and has been since the very first video. In fact, my first ever piece of fan art was this 240p JPEG of Review Bro's face with an uncropped image of blonde hair slapped on top of it. All because I made the mistake of saying I vaguely looked like him, but had blonde hair. And well, I guess in terms of fan art, this is one hell of a way to start. And I'd never heard about his channel before that point, but like I said, countless people have been requesting me to cover him, so a while back I checked things out ahead of time in case that day ever came, and honestly, I was really taken aback by what I found. Words can't explain this, but I'll give it my best shot. Review Bra, or Rapport of the Week as he's been known by officially, is a high-class, suit-wearing, fast food reviewer slash podcaster. He uploads bi-weekly, strangely enough, given his channel name, and most of his videos consist of him sitting in front of whatever background location he sees fit at the time, while he reviews fast food products from a vast array of restaurants. According to several sources, these reviews are divided into two series, the first being for the core fast food reviews called Running on Empty, and the second being Unnamed, focusing on specialty beverages. He also has a second channel that he'll regularly post podcast-esque content on in the form of entries to his VROW series, which stands for Voice of Report of the Week. Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and everyone listening. This is the Port of the Week. This is the voice of the Port of the Week. Yes, the real voice. No imposter here. And by the way, he'll actually broadcast these on real shortwave radio frequencies internationally. Now, the fact that he's a food reviewer might seem a little bit bland and mundane, but in all honesty, Review Bra himself, which is a name that's been unofficially coined for him by his audience, by the way, is more interesting as a person than the subject matter of his videos. He wears suits all the time, talks extremely formally, and has been extremely memorable as a result. In regards to why he's like this, well, nobody really knows. The general public has tossed around allegations of him being a time traveler, 
Miller, and while that would make sense given some of his behaviors, it just doesn't hold water when held to scrutiny. But, from what I know about him as the former champion of Gentleman's Battleship, Review Bar is actually a true monster. The other players say he'll regularly start fights. How much money to punch you in the face multiple times? So is he saying he would pay me? You know, I wanted to know what the going rate exactly is. If he, if he listed his prices, maybe we can kind of work a deal out, but I'm afraid he didn't. Uh, so unfortunately, that was just a business opportunity that was lost, I'm afraid to say. Has a crippling drug addiction. How are you able to snort an entire pizza? Pizza is one hell of a drug. <laughs> was an illegitimate child. He looks like a rat. Now that's, that's, you know, that's, that's fair. Um, I think I do have maybe 5% rat DNA uh, in, in my makeup. Is completely illiterate. Start doing, you know, uh, looking at the menu. See, oh yeah, they got the pulled pork, a cheeseburger. That's why I like to say cheeseburger. But worst of all is a full-blown boomer. Well, I'm not a big fan of social media, you know. I don't know. I just don't like what it did. Um, you know, it's it's... You no, know, I'm, you know, I'm gonna keep my thoughts to it myself. Um, just know they're not necessarily positive. Um, I'm just not a fan of, of, of social media. Um, I, I really don't like it. Now this is just what the other competitors have told me, so I don't have much proof to back any of it. But what I can do is cite evidence I found of a much darker truth surrounding him and the creation of his channel. Now, I know what all of you are thinking right now. You've probably got the idea that I'm going to tell you Review Bra is some kind of a clone puppet inserted by Google to help curb the minds of the general populace to spread Google's influence and bring about a new world order with a homogenous thought pattern. Well, for once, that is actually not what I believe is going on here. Review Bra is a puppet created by Google without a doubt. But unlike many other YouTubers part of this coalition, Review Bra was pawned off by Google and sold to another another evil organization to serve a similar purpose but for a different side. And not to restate the obvious, but in case you're unaware, Google.com is a secret organization trying to take over the world by paying off and or brainwashing internet figures to subtly convey Google's messages to control the general public. Some of these are clones of the spree killer Elliot Roger who was inserted to grab an edgy market, others are sexual deviants to coerce the minds of the retro community, and others are flamboyant yet somehow not gay faggots named MatPat who mold the minds of 12 year old hipsters everywhere. Now even Review Bro's own audience have had their suspicions about this very thing for quite a while now. Now speaking on the incomprehensible, of course aside from all the standard people just saying this or that, uh, we get a few truly incomprehensible com comments that do come in every day, like this guy says, why do you do it a food review here is why because you're an illuminati puppet you're helping them with their depopulation agenda doing review of unhealthy food first year of your youtube you did energy drink review is it any healthy people that look like you do you even look at yourself i mean give me a break but based on the evidence I've accumulated, he's not just any other Google puppet like the people I just named. Review Bro has a much different story since the conventional explanation doesn't make sense for him. He's a food reviewer who rarely strays from his format, so I'm not sure what subtle messages he could be instilling. But subtextual messages aside, his videos in and of themselves are directly created as a means for Review Bro to express his opinions on food products, which could directly influence customer buying habits if his audience was vast enough. So that being said, I say it makes way more sense that Review Bro, or John, was actually sold by Google to one of the fast food channels he reviews as a means of helping them promote their products. Think about it, it really is brilliant. He could show the products of the brand he was owned by while simultaneously bashing their competitors all under the grounds of being an impartial reviewer with no stakes in the well-being of any one company. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. For those of you who don't know, Burger King a couple months back bought out Popeyes and for those of, for a lot of the people who understood and knew what was going on, there was some protest about it. Because it seems lately, Burger King is like the opposite of King Midas, you know, where everything he touched turned to gold in, in the story. With Burger King, everything they touch is just garbage and it's terrible. The proof of this lies in the precautions Review Bro takes to avoid capture. Like I said, he sticks out enough to the point where his own audience is onto him, and John knows this, which is why he's taken measures to keep himself safe that inadvertently confirm everything. For instance, he has a massive radio antenna positioned in his attic that he uses to track the cops, should they ever try to arrest him. Yeah, the attic is bare, nothing up there at all. And there is a big radio antenna up in there. There is. Um. It's a nice solid radio antenna up there of all sorts of different prongs and 
what have you. It's for um, it's about you know four feet high or so. Um, it's a, a VHF UHF frequency antenna. In layman's terms, it's a antenna for a police scanner, which it's hooked up to. So uh, I have a police scanner upstairs. Great range for it. Um, can hear the cops anywhere from uh, New York City even to Philadelphia. And not only that, but he accidentally refers to a time when he was forced to murder someone who was onto his secret. Normally every day, you start off with a level head. You keep your chin up, you think rationally. You think, all right, you got a plan, you stick to it. You know what you're doing, you're in control. And but sometimes every now and then, and hopefully it'll just be every now and then, something happens. Life happens, really. Catches you off guard. Didn't see this coming. See that coming. But it came anyway, had its impact, and now you're left with the mess to clean up. This isn't the only time Review Bra has faced off against someone who knew the truth. In 2014, there was a second attempt in his life when he was put onto a bus that had its brakes cut. 15 minutes late, the bus arrived. Went to a slow stop, okay? So I get on the bus, and the first thing I notice is that there's actually another man standing right next to the driver, um, who is a technician from the bus company. So immediately I knew something was up with this bus, if there had to be a, a technician from the company riding the bus also. <clears throat> and I soon found out why. After I got on, handed him my ticket and uh, took a seat, I heard the technician from the company talking to the company driver. And he said, uh, yeah, you know, the, uh, the, brakes don't, the brakes don't work. Um, so we were driving this bus without any brakes. Um, it was a very, very tense ride. To know that, you know, it can't stop unless you pull the emergency brake. Um, I don't know who the who the real smart one at the bus company was who decided, oh yeah, let me, uh, let me get this bus here with no working brakes and put it on the road and fill it with passengers. And it's perfectly safe. Um, but they did it anyways. Um, you know, so it was all right until we got on the highway. And we're going a little faster, and lo and behold, there's a red traffic light ahead of us with, with stopped cars, and the bus had to swerve off to the side of the road and pull the emergency brake. And uh, everyone and everything that wasn't tied down on the bus went boom, forward several feet, um, myself included. Though assassination attempts aside, people have tried to stop Review Bro from spreading his influence in other ways. Like by hacking a radio station to prevent the newest installment of VORW from reaching international airwaves. I woke up just in time for the first broadcast airing to, uh, you know, start checking it out and make sure everything's going all right. And I'm not hearing the show. It's just, it's, it's dead air. I checked the tune-in stream and it's a silence. There's, there's nothing there. I checked the shortwave frequency, you know, where the, the radio station is supposed to be broadcasting it. There's nothing. I'm scratching my head. I'm trying to think, well, wait, wait a minute. You know, I... I know I sent them the file. I know I, you know, I submitted the show to them. So, so what's going on? So I sent the manager uh, of the radio station an email. You know, not not angry. We're on really good terms. And I just said, you know, well, you know, what's going on? Is everything all right with the computers? You know, I, I just wanted to check. Uh, you know, my my I don't see my show airing. What's uh what's up? And it, then he broke it to me. He said. Listen, you know, we, we kind of have a problem. Someone hacked into our computer system, deleted, or I think encrypted, all the files that they had, every audio program, and then was demanding money to get them restored. And they said, you know, look, we're dead in the water here. We can't even access any of the shows that we're supposed to air. We're not going to give in to this guy's demands, so we need to get a whole new computer system set up. And unfortunately, uh, it's not going to be finalized until maybe maybe tomorrow or at the earliest. Now, you might wonder exactly which fast food chain in particular Review Bro is in the pocket of. Well, for that, I direct you to his fast food tear response list video. Response to, you know, Senpai Dub Dub himself from a while back. All of this is exactly how it should be. I'm issuing everyone a challenge. If you think your list is more accurate than this, then fucking prove it, bitch. Make a better list than this. Any other places? Let me think. 
Little Caesars too. That's another good one. Right, Little Caesars again. These are all the places that I think kind of do a good job on some things and then other things aren't good at all. Like it's, it's, it's iffy. Note that only one fast food chain is in S tier. That being none other than Chick-fil-A. Because of Chick-fil-A's constant controversies against gays or something like that, they're forced to redeem themselves in other ways. Like by using a puppet to promote their products and ensure the quality of their food to the masses. And why does Review Bra wear suits and talk all old timey? Well, that's because he's been a puppet for Chick-fil-A since it opened in the 40s, and he's been kept young by all the preservatives in the fast food he eats. I know people have accused him of being a time traveler, though he did make a video debunking it and has admitted to being older than 21 on multiple occasions. When we kind of look at the past, right? We kind of think back to how we were five, 10, 15, 20 years ago, right? Looking back when you were two, huh? Sounds fishy to me. But in one instance, he actually reveals that he is in fact 85 years old. And uh, Twitter, um, I don't understand that either. I'm, I'm trying to understand the site. I, I feel like I'm like an 85 year old right here, like a technologically inept grandpa. So that being said, if we want to get an approximate date on when he was cloned, simply add five years to account for the video's upload date and contrast that with the date that Chick-fil-A opened, which was in 1946. Given the fact that he's 90 now, Review Bro would have been 14 when he first was made into a puppet, which lines up perfectly with the age he was during the making of his first video on YouTube. And, oh no. That... that can't be a coincidence. Review Bro must have been used as a template to create the original Elliot Roger clone. The only person who ever beat me is the Supreme Gentleman and he died years ago. Come on, there must be at least one Freudian slip in here. Where is your fleet, you Supreme Gentleman, you? And that really goes for anyone. If you don't like the content, you don't have to watch it. We all have that free ability to click on the channel, and if we don't like it, could leave the dislike and we can click off of it. That's it! His only weak spot! Shall I give the order, sir? What are you waiting for? I... I can't. I can't destroy him. He might be a glorified Chick-fil-A mascot, but he's completely innocent. Probably one of the most innocent people on the site. He's wholesome. I... I don't... I don't care if he's a puppet. He doesn't deserve this. But what about the Gentleman's Bottleship Championship title? Eh, it'll be a tie. He'll never find us up here anyway. You were saying, Commander? Uh, Commander? The world wasn't always this way, you know? And even though Review Bro was a goddamn Chick fil A puppet, I still loved him. What does that make me? Puppet lover? Beast? Are any of us really human anymore? <laughs> Jargon, it's between you and God now.